Good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are in the world. My name is Ingrid Jones and I have with me the one and only White Rhino, Dave Allen. Yes, Ingrid, how are you doing? It's been a long time. I hope you're all right. Yeah, I'm all right. It's been a while. Yep. People keep asking me, they've inboxed me a few times, why haven't you not spoken to White Rhino and his biggest fight coming up? Yeah. Well, I've been trying to get hold of the White Rhino. He keeps ducking and diving all the time. So, finally, we're here. Yeah, we're here. We're here. I'm back, and um, yeah, we're back, and, and it's 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 four weeks from um, from a massive massive fight, um, the biggest fight I've had. You know, it's gonna be. It definitely will be live on Sky Sports. You know, if if the fight holds through, you know, Richard keeps fit and well, and and I do the same. And um, it's exciting times, and it and it's nearly here, and. Um, you know, and it's the fight I wanted. You know, it's not the Joshua fight, obviously. You know, he's, he's moved on to world level. But after that, this is the biggest fight I could have got. It's local and it's a big fight. You're still a mystery man, Dave. You're still a mystery man in British boxing circles. And you will remain a mystery man until you step for the ropes that night in Sheffield, if I'm correct. Yeah, yeah I'm a mystery man to everyone apart from Richard, which is not great. You know, Richard knows me inside out. Um, you know, on a personal level, on a boxing level, I've known Richard for a long time, um, and I believe it is a good fight. You know, it's a very good fight. You know, Richard brings a lot of things to the table that I struggle with. You know, and you know the size and, and the movement and the awkwardness, and, and I bring things that he struggles with, like massive power. You know, I'm sure, and I'm going to be there all night. So, you know, we counteract each other. It's going to be a great fight. We've got great styles. We know each other. We're going to be at it from round one, and. Um, until it ends, you know, which it could be round one. I'm fancying round one myself. You know, I always do uh, go in there to take people out, but it's going to be a great fight for however long it lasts. Now, you know me, I'm a straight shooter. I'm not going to duck and dodge. But the qu- first question will be asked is the last time I saw Richard Towers fight, he was against Lucas Brown. Yeah. Am I correct? He's had one fight since, he's had a six rounder and since. How was that? He, he he stopped the opponent in the last round. Okay. But you can't really take much from that. That was a an Eastern European opponent. But you know, yeah, the last time that that people saw him was the Lucas Brown fight. Yeah. That's right. Now, based on the Lucas Brown fight, and this is no disrespect to Lucas Brown, who's fighting now for a world title, actually. And I think a lot of people around the world are quite excited to see Lucas Brown finally get it on for a world title fight against Shagayev. Where do you rate Lucas Brown first and foremost? And then where do you put your abilities in? Or is that a dangerous thing to be thinking? It's a, it's a, it's a different fight altogether. I know I sparred Richard before the Lucas Brown fight. I was sparring Richard for the fight. And and the Richard from, from before that fight to the Richard from six months ago is a different fighter altogether. He's a much improved fighter. But then again, so am I. And, you know, I'm not, I'm not massive on Lucas Brown. I don't think he's a great fighter. I think he's a big puncher. And, you know... People say that Richard can't hold a shot, but you know, if Lucas Brown hits most heavyweights on the chin, he's going to take him out. So, you know, it's difficult to take take much from that. You know, it was a long time ago, and Richard has improved massively with Adam Boo. You know, I know I've seen that firsthand. You know, I sparred Richard only six months ago, but I think the thing in this fight is I've sparred Richard a lot in the past, and I've done it. I've done it when I'm four or five stone overweight, and I've been sparring twelve rounds in that condition. And and um, you know, March twenty sixth, the shape I am in. I believe, you know, I'm, I'm one of the best heavyweights, you know, in the world in that kind of shape, and I've proven that by holding my own with world title contenders and stuff. And it's a, it's a, it's a case of getting in that correct shape and applying that in the ring, and you know, and and Richard has improved, and you know, it is a test. It's a big test. You know, it's probably, probably my, it's the biggest fight up to date, and you know, we'll see where we're at. Um, but I'll see where I'm at when I spar with Robert Helene next week. He's a similar size to Richard, but obviously he's a few levels above. He's a few levels above myself. And we'll see where we're at. But, you know, things right now are going really well. But Richard, you know, I've got a lot of respect for Richard. And I think he's a good fighter. He's underrated. You don't you don't get sent to the Klitschko camp uh, numerous times. And you don't get sparred with David Hay amongst others. You know, if you're not a good fighter. So mm. it, is a, it, is a, it is a test. And, and you know, when it's a British title eliminated and it's possibly another title maybe put on the line, you know, in the next coming weeks, there may be news about that. You know, um, 
you know, you got it is a test. Every every fight at that level is a test. So uh, it's one I'm looking forward to. It's interesting because a few things there. Richard Towers got a lot. I got a lot of respect for Richard Towers and James Elabishir, who seems to know a little bit about boxing, had had a lot of respect for James, uh, for, for Richard Towers. Said he was a he's a puncher, big puncher, yeah. and he thought that um, Towers would be going places in the heavyweight division before he lost to Lucas Brown. And he still believes in Richard Towers. Now that being said, when I spoke to Bashir. Um, and the interview is coming out shortly. When I spoke to Bashir about Richard Towers versus Dave Allen, Bashir actually favours Towers to beat you. But what are your thoughts on that? I don't know. I don't know. Um, now that, that to me, when I heard that, I was like, hmm, "That's interesting." You know, I respect everything that Bashir says because you know, obviously, he's, a, he's been involved in boxing. You know, probably my lifetime. Uh, two times over so um, you know I have to respect his opinion mm-hmm. but you know Bashir you know he has some, a lot of nice things to say about myself as well yes and you know the Bashir that saw me I was I was 20, 20 stone and 7 pounds when I squad Vladimir Klitschko in, in when I was with Bashir you know I'm a different fighter to that and we've all got opinions and we all see our fights are going to plan out and pan out in a different way and I could speak to you again in 5 weeks time and and after the fight, and, and you know, Bashir may be right, he may be wrong, but we don't know because it hasn't happened yet. But yeah. I can't sit here and say Bashir is wrong or Bashir's opinion is wrong. It's an opinion. And, you know, there's lots out there that see Richard is, is, is going to win the fight. And he, and he probably is the betting favourite because he's got that experience and he's been at that level and he's, he's been in around that level for a, for a couple of years. So, you know, I, I am the underdog and, and that's nice because it takes all pressure off me. You know, Rich is, Rich is the older man. This is his last chance. And, and for me, you know, I'm coming in fresh and I'm hungry, and it is my first try at it. But you know, I I want to I want to succeed, and I'm and I'm as hungry as, as he is for definite. And um, you know, Bashir, you know, I'm not his friend now. I'm not going to speak to him for a while. But uh, you know, I respect his opinion, and um, you know, it'd be interesting to listen to see what he's got to think about it. And you know, I am the smaller man in the fight, and I can see why people would favour Richard. You know, he's going to use his size, and he's going to move, and he's going to spoil, and he's going to do this and that. But you know, it's a ten-round fight, and one of us is going to get hit on the chin. And I think, you know, both big punches, but I, I just think that my durability will will win through on the night. Okay, that's another point. You said you got the best chin in heavyweight boxing. Yeah. Well, that's great, and you know, I'm going to say I'm going to speak from a fan's perspective because the fans want the question answered. The questions, right? And the question I'm asking you is this. How do you know you've got the best chin in the heavyweight division if you've not been hit by the biggest punches in the heavyweight division in the ring yet as a pro? Yeah, I know what you're saying. I'm in serious mode today. I'm in serious mode right now. Good, but what good. I will say is, Richard punches very hard. You know, Richard's right. a hard punching heavyweight. There's heavyweight, all heavyweights punch hard. Right. And then you've got heavyweights who punch hard, and then you've got heavyweights who who just punch because they're heavyweights. But Richard is a heavyweight who punches hard. He's a heavyweight and he punches hard anyway. So. You know, if Richard hits me on the chin and he keeps doing so, you know, eventually you can't keep taking shots on the chin. It doesn't matter who you are, you know. I can sit here and say I've got this, my chin's this and that, but I'm not stupid. I'm not going to be there for Richard to hit, though, because I'm not stupid enough to think that if Richard hits me on the chin, it's not going to phase me. These are 10-ounce gloves, and that's a 17-stone man with a, with a lot of power, so, you know, I'm not going to be getting hit on the chin, you know. And I think, you know, people call Richard chinny, but... Any heavyweight who gets hit by a man like Lucas Brown and, and myself, you know, if, if if a heavyweight hits another heavyweight on the chin, you know, more often than not, they're going to go. So I don't think that's a factor in this fight. I think the the, the thing is, it's it's who sticks, who can stick that punch on the other on the other man's chin, and, and that's probably why Bashir favours Richard due to the size and stuff. But you know, when I'm in good shape, you know, I'm a, I'm a nightmare to hit, and I'm coming to box on the night, and I know no one believes that, but it's, it's and I don't believe that either. One hundred percent the truth. It's... I know. I know you say you're going to box him, and I and I, and I, and, I, and I appreciate your skills, Peter Fury, Eddie Chambers are two already who, are in high praise of your skills and your ability, uh, and they've seen you up close, and you're no mystery to them. But it's just the taller guy, the shorter guy. The thing is, the guy, the shorter guy has to get on the inside and land his bombs. The guy on the outside has to keep the guy at long distance, yeah. long range, use the jab. When he comes inside, hit him in the uppercuts. I mean, that, that, that's no mystery. That's just, you know. But the fact that you're saying you're going to go out there and outbox Richard Towers yeah, is something that's going to be fascinating to watch. A guy much shorter outboxing a guy that's much taller. 
Yeah, that's why I'm so excited about this fight because I've been sparring a lot lately and um, and I truly believe like the condition that I'm in and the preparation that is going into this and I've always believed that on my day when everything comes together, I'm one of the best fighters in the world already, you know, on a on a skill-based level and phys- everything about it and, it and I think it's all going to come together on that night and I'm really excited about it because I'm going to show that like, you know, I'm, I'm six foot three and I'm going to outbox the giant. I'm going to outbox him. I'm going to beat him at his own game. And I'm going to take him out. And, you know, the excitement is palpable. I'm really excited about it because I can feel it in myself. I can feel it in the gym every day. I mean, you know, people, the people out that have seen me, you know, they've not seen it before. They've seen me out of shape. They've seen me in shape but not really fit. And, and, and I'm just really excited because I can feel it. I can feel it in the gym. And, like... Rich is going to get a big surprise because Rich has, has, has sparred me in, in some terrible condition and, and, and I've got a lot of respect for him. You know, He's a very intelligent man. He knows that he's going to be a different David Allen on the March 26th than he's ever seen before. But I truly believe that you know, I'm, I'm a few levels above the level that we're at right now. And I just haven't shown that yet. And you know, as you can tell in my voice and you can see my face, I know no one else can see my face right now. But there's a there's a there's a massive buzz between me and Steffi and and the other people in the gym that can see what's going off. And it sounds a little bit big headed, but you know I truly believe that like I'm on a higher level than this. I'm I've got the ability to go on to a higher level. And it's all coming together now, and, it, and it's really exciting. And um, you know a, a lot of people are going to be are going to like. Not, they're going to be in disbelief of what they're going to see on March 26 because they're going to be speaking about another heavyweight from Britain that's that's going to big places. Ultimately, you're a great talker. Ultimately, you're very chari- charismatic. Ultimately, the bottom line, and it's not just because Stone Cold Steve Austin says so. It's a fact. You can do all the talking yep. in the ring. People need to see you in the ring on Sky Sports doing the business against... Um, Richard Towers, what does it feel like going to be fighting a marquee fighter, a name that everybody knows? Finally, for you. Yeah, it's great, you know, and and like I said, the Joshua fight. I wanted the Joshua fight. Did I think I was ever going to get the Joshua fight? No, I know I wouldn't get it because you know, for all the talk, I appreciate. I've only had nine fights, and my best win is against a Frenchman who was who 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 yet yeah, is a is a top fighter. Is a really good fighter and would give a lot of top fighters struggle. There's a ten and seven record. And then the rest of my records filled with Eastern European imports and, and journeymen. So I knew the Joshua fight was a no go, but you've got to put yourself out there and you've got to get your name out there. And I do that. I'm good at that because I can, like you say, I can talk. I can do that all day. That's the easy part. But, you know, I've got, the respect I've got for Richard on, on all levels, personal level and a, on a professional level, you know. Mm. And the fact that I'm fighting him at Sheffield Arena, you know, 10 miles away from where I, I live or where I'm from, it's unbelievable, you know. To fight the man that I looked up to as a kid, you know, I really did look up to Richard. I still do now. You know, I'm not going to lie and say that I don't because I do. And it's going to be a very weird feeling getting in there. But the both of us have got like, we've got our own family to provide for now, you know, and we've got we've got other things that we need to do. And, and if I've got to beat my friend to do that, I will have to do that, you know, and I will shake his hand, win, lose or draw afterwards. You know, he knows that. But... People worrying about the friendship, you know, that's going to get put aside. That's been put aside already. I'm not putting all this work in for March 26 to touch Richard's glove and, and go steady and go easy because, you know, me and my team, we, we know what I'm capable of and we're going to show that on the night. And, and I'm, I'm just sorry that that's at Richard's expense, but, you know, it's 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 going to be it's going to be a successful night for myself. How do you put aside friendship? I mean, I, I hear people say, oh, I'll put aside friendship. How do you put it aside and know you're going to get in a ring with somebody who you've looked up to and you're going to go out there and dish punishment at them and hurt them, which is the hurt game? How do you do that mentally and then physically? It's pretty easy, pretty easy really, because, you know, I've got family to provide for. I've got friends um, that, you know, that I know if I succeed, they, they will succeed as well in, in what they're doing, you know, and, and me winning and, and doing better at boxing, you know, it, it's going to help them. And, um, you know, Rich is, Rich is the same. Rich has got family, you know. Rich has got a great family, you know. And, and, and you know, Rich is, Rich is, is going to be successful in life anyway. I know I hope we both are outside of boxing, you know. But, you know, it is sad that it comes down to that, you know. But we both have to the same goal and we both, and we both have to the same thing and there can only be one winner, you know. 
And, um, you know, like I said, it is sad. We are friends and I want Richard to succeed. But when it comes down to it, you know, Richard's my friend, but, you know, family and, and, and close friends come before that. And that, and that's why it's easy to put it to one side because we've got, we've got more important people than each other, even though we are friends, to provide for. And that's, and that's basically and simply what it comes down to. The area title for or the area championship of the world, as we both have yeah. spoken about, that that period there. Looking back, do you think it's a blessing in disguise? You never took that fight, or that fight never came through, or or do you think it's just well? You tell me. Yeah, I think it was a blessing because I fought the Frenchman, and that was a better fight. That really, you know, after that fight, I had a lot of, um, you know, after that fight on a on a personal level in my life, you know, I, I struggled with a lot of things. You know, and um, you know, I had a six-week period, maybe two-month period where life wasn't great. You know, and the boxing was put on the back foot. I pulled out of the fight on the November the twenty-eighth, and um, and things weren't great. You know, and I struggled with a Frenchman, and I took it really hard. You know, I take these things hard because you know I want to succeed so badly. So when I don't do what I want to do, you know, I take it. I do take it badly, and um, you know, and. And, and, and the opportunity that's come up with this fight with Richards kind of put me back on track. So, and people talk about boxing, like, people say to me, do you want it or not? But for me, it really is a case of, I wouldn't say it's life or death, but, you know, it's very, um, you know, it's pretty close. Because if I'm not succeeding in boxing, which has become my life since I left school, you know, it's, it's um, you know, my life is a, is a dark place without boxing in it. And that's, and that's why I've, you know, put so much into this fight and done everything I can do because um, cause it means that much to me. So I don't. When people question why people question my my thing, I say that maybe a few years ago, but not now because there's more important things in my life now, and I've got to I've got to provide for that and mm. and and improve people right or wrong, which other way you want to look at it. So your fan base wants to see you boxing regular, consistently. And against good names, that's what that's what, and and for you to be successful, that's what any fan base would want. So, yeah, you know, we get this fight out of the way, and, and we're there. You know, we're there. We're 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 in and around British title level, and um, you know, I'm not a money orientated man, but the money will come with it. You know, and the glory will come with it, and everything else that comes with it will come with it, but. I just want to fight and, and win titles and, and be successful, you know, and that's what it all comes down to for myself. I just want to win things and and, and prove special people right that are in my life, that they are right in believing in me. And and, uh, and that's what it comes down to. That's my reason why I'm doing this, you know. It's not money. It's, um, it's, it's, it's thanking all the people that have believed in me and helped me along the way, and this is the best way to do it. There is something I do hear, and it seems to be coming more and more in boxing now, where fighters say, this is the biggest fight of my life, and I'm going to train like I've never trained before, and I'm going to do the things I've never done before, so that means I'm going to be a better, I'll am going to be be a a better fighter on the night. The question I ask you, and it's not directly just at you, that's just fighters generally, because you hear it yourself. I mean, look at the Lucas Brown situation. He's fighting for the World Championship. I mean, he's a prime example. Lucas Brown says, for this fight, I'm going to be in the best shape of my life. I'm going to do this, I'm going to do that, I'm going to... And you can see the difference in how Lucas Brown's looking in the gym already. And yeah. I just asked myself the question, and it's just a question, and he's not having a pop. It's more, well, if you could do that for that fight there, why can't you do that for every fight, which would mean you'd look better, you'd probably get through your opponents better, and you put on pretty better performances. I mean, yeah. clearly. I mean, but I don't... Is that a financial thing? Is that a, um, is that a motivation thing? Or, you know, and then you look at someone like Scott Quid, who, Quig, for example, who's just consistent, ticking over all the time. Always yeah. Another one, Mayweather, in shape all the time, in shape all the time. What is that? I don't know, because I can't speak for anyone else, but, mm -hmm. like, for myself, <coughs> doing professional at 20 years of age, you know, and mm -hmm. and uh, I was a 20-year-old 20, 20 boy, you know, and I was a 21-year-old boy and a 22-year-old boy and a 23-year-old boy, and... Um, you know, only only like things that have taken place in the last couple of months of my life have kind of have kind of put me in a position to think. You know, you you only get one chance at this, and and um, for every fight, I always start out with the best of intentions in a training camp or or whatever you want to call it. I always start out with the best of intentions, and it always goes south. But 
you know, for this fight, there's everything there, you know, there's opportunity there. And the respect I've got for Richard, I'm not going to turn up out of shape to fight, you know, Richard. I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to... I'm not going to disrespect him by turning up out of shape. I'm going to come in the best shape possible because I know he wants to beat the best David Allen possible. So, um, you know, it's all about opportunity and, and it's about growing up. And I'll, I'll be back in six months and I'll say I've finally grown up again because I'm sure still more foolish stuff in the next six months. But I feel like I'm, I've grown and, um, you know, and, and I have to say Steffi Bull's been a massive help in all this. You know, he, he's... He's kind of he's kind of put it on a plate for me, and it's and and I've just and this time I've took the opportunity and I've gone with it, and you know, and that's what that's what March 26 is all about. It's about repaying back the faith that he and a lot of others like yourself have put into me over the years, because everyone's kind of seen that the ability and and, and the good intention and the goodwill is there, but it's just taking it's just taking time to get to that point. But you know, we're confident in getting there, and, and March 26 will be a good start in doing that. It's a shame we never really got to see that fight that you know that you're in against the Frenchman over ten rounds because people would have got to see a bit more of what you could do and they'd get to see you. Yeah, it was a it was a it was a hard fight, you know, and <clears throat> it wasn't a great showcase of my skills or anything, you know, and <clears throat> it was a hard fight and I, I struggled through it and you know I just I just manned through it. I said I would say I just manned through it. I got through it. I got the win and. You know, the scorecards, I didn't really close. It wasn't that close. I thought I won the fight comfortable, but it was a poor showing. And You know, I am inexperienced in, in ring, really. You know, all the experience going abroad and sparring the world champion, you know, it counts for nothing when a ball goes for real. But, you know, for this fight, all I can say is everything is, is 100% where it needs to be. And, you know, I've got four more weeks to keep it there. And if I do that, I'm 100% sure I will come out successful because... Like I say, me and the people around me know that I'm capable of, of beating Richard and beating fighters a few levels above that, and it'll all come in time. And 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 now that my brain has caught up with my physical capabilities, you know, the sky's the limit. So you know, we'll see where we'll see where we're at soon. My mind's kind of ticking and ticking and ticking and ticking here, and I'm thinking to myself, if Anthony Joshua were to beat Charles Martin, what's your thoughts on that first and foremost? I think you know, as far as the heavyweight world title fight goes, it's one of the worst has ever been in the history of boxing, I know, and that sounds bad, but <coughs> Charles Martin is one of the worst, is probably the worst world heavyweight champion there's ever been, and Anthony Joshua, for, you know, for all the promise and potential that is there, he's only had 16 fights, his best fight is Dillian White, whose best one is Marcelo Nascimento, so, you know, it is poor, he's very poor, but it'll sell because Anthony's a superstar, and, you know, and I hope he's successful, because he's a nice man, and, and, you know, it's good for British boxing, so I hope he's successful, but that's brutal honesty right there. Um, brutal honesty. Um, should Anthony Joshua get past Charles Martin? Yeah. Do you think he'd give you a world title shot? One hundred percent no. And if he did, I'd boycott the pay per view myself. You know, he's. Um... Think about this a second. Just think about it a second. He gets a world title. He needs to make a defense. I, I, but I do understand his first fight would be a, a mandatory though, so he probably couldn't do that. I think, you know, I beat Richard. You know, my aim is to become a British champion. And, um, okay. you know, I could only be two fights away from doing that. Right. <clears throat> and if that is the case, you know, in the heavyweight division, you can put yourself in the shot window pretty quickly. Yeah. For these fights. As Anthony's shown himself, you know, mm -hmm. but Anthony sells out the O2. And Anthony has an Olympic gold medal. And, you know, he, he's Anthony Joshua. You know, he's a brand now himself. He's a superstar, isn't he? So... You know, he's, he's had it handed to him on a plate, but at the same time, he's worked very hard for that at the same time. But, you know, the, I, I hope to become British champion in 2016, and I don't really, I haven't really looked past that. I've not looked past Richard Towers on the 26th of March. But, you know, that's the goal. I beat Richard, I become British heavyweight champion. And, and I'm not looking for, I'm not looking past Richard, but at the same time, the British title is always there. It's always on my mind. I'm always looking at that. That's what I want. That's what I started boxing for. And as far as Anthony's concerned, you know, I hope he beats Charles Martin and, and what I hope as a boxing fan, you know, I hope he doesn't get the easy defence. I hope he challenges himself. But at the same time, I feel if he challenges himself and takes on the Tyson Furies of the division, he's, he's, he's not going to be champion for long. So it's a catch-22 taking the, the shot this early. But, you know, good luck to him. He's going to make a lot of money doing whatever he's doing. So good luck to him. The return of David Price. Now with Dave Caldwell. What are your yeah. thoughts on that? Neil Price is a good addition to the division. 
you know, is a big name and and I for one hope, you know, the the winner of me and Towers could 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 definitely fight a prize for the for the British heavyweight title. Do you think he's gonna wanna take a fight that soon? I mean, against someone like yourself or, or Towers? No, I would think so. I would think a lot of people watching this and a lot of people in boxing would see David Price beating me and Richard very comfortably, you know, because um, Price is a big name. I'm a nobody in the division, you know. I'm 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 the kid that no one's quite sure about yet, and, and until I beat Richard on the 26, it's going to stay that way. It depends what kind of job I do on the 26. Is people's opinion? <coughs> Everyone's opinion on me will be made on the 26th of March, and that's why it's going to be. A, that's why I've got to perform to my best. Because if not, I'll be the kid that everyone spoke about and he, and he flattered to deceive. But David Price is a good addition and he's working with David Caldwell, who, who must be the luckiest man in boxing because he gets to work with some good fighters. He works with some great fighters and Jamie and Gavin, Tony, and they're all winning. And, you know, if he can get David Price back winning again, it'll be interesting to see where he can get him to. Right. OK. So uh, I'll tell you something. If you win your fight and you're really good at doing it, Baylorix views start to go up, I think. Yeah, for definite, and so will Four C Sports Media. Add a noble force, please subscribe. <laughs> Thank you very much. Um, and uh, um, uh, and if it goes the other way as well, I'm sure that there'll be lots of views there as well. Yeah, this is boxing, and and you know you go into every fight knowing there's a chance you're going to win or lose, and and um, so yeah, you know people's opinions. I get a lot of stick on Twitter now. I know I'm going places. I know I'm getting there because I'm starting to get more abuse daily. So, um, so you get abuse on Twitter then? <clears throat> Bits and pieces are trickling through now, yeah. But that makes me happy. That means I feel like I'm getting somewhere now. I feel like I'm in a meaningful fight because people are they're taking the time to tweet about it. So thank, thanks for that, everyone. And on YouTube? I'm not sure because I've not been I've not been interviewing as much lately. You know, I've been training hard in the gym. And I'm going to let that do the talking, but, you know, for yourself, I have a noble force here. You know, I'm always there. I'm always there to discuss such things. So, um, so yeah, we'll see when this gets put out. We'll see if my old friend is around to abuse me on YouTube. We'll Which see. Is that Kyle D? Well, Kyle D is your mate now, isn't he? Kyle D's my man now. He's my man. He's always <laughs> supporting me. So, I'm not sure who the fella is, but I'm sure I'll realise when you upload this in the comments. You know that tomorrow is Frampton Quick, right? The big one. I'm excited about that. I think it's pay-per-view worthy. That is pay-per-view worthy. <coughs> Nick Hall in private messaged me earlier um, about the fight. And I said it's pay-per-view worthy, Nick. Um, so, yeah, I'm really looking forward to it. And and like I say, I'm, I've been hearing a lot of opinions from like Nick Hall and he's, he's, you know, he's got an inside view of it. He'd be there at the press conference and the weigh-in and, and people are saying that Frampton looks tight of the way, but I think Quigg looks tight of the way. But it's an interesting fight. And Frampton is a superstar in Ireland. And I think he'll be successful. And I think he's the man that could beat Rigondeau. So I'm pulling for Frampton on a, for a lot of different reasons. And Joe Gallagher is definitely pretty high on the list of reasons why I'd like to see Frampton win, as you know. <coughs> Any reason why? Would you, would you ever see yourself training at the Gallagher's gym? I've been in Gallagher's gym, but I'm pretty sure... He didn't listen to any of your interviews at the time, so I probably wouldn't have got through the door. So, um, no, I'm a I'm a Wigan, I'm a McGuigan man, you know. I've got a lot of respect for what he did in his career, you know, and I've watched all of his fights and the fights that I've could see. And you know, I'm a big Frampton fan, so you, it's a great you, fight, though. Did you manage to see the way in uh, with uh, with uh, your your friend Gallagher and uh, Shane McGuigan? I think Shane McGuigan, had, I think Shane McGuigan would probably go for him in about five seconds. You think so? I think so, yeah. My money would be on Shane. And I think Barry would go through Eddie pretty quickly as well, to be fair. <coughs> the feisty, them little Irishmen, aren't they? Because Frampton really looked like he was going to lose it at the press conference yesterday. But it's a great fight. And the undercard's cracking as well. So, I, for once, I can't complain about the pay-per-view. Isaac Lowe fighting for the Commonwealth title? Yeah, I hope Isaac does the job. Obviously, I spent a lot of time with Isaac in Bolton. Mm -hmm. I know he does a job, but it's a good fight. Mark McCullough, I think that's his name. Marco yep. McCullough, he's a good fighter. Jose Burton, he's a good fighter. That's a good fight. Against Mark Shinquin. Yeah, so it's a good show. And um, I'll be at the Doncaster Dome tomorrow evening. Jason Cunningham fighting for the English title. And I'll be watching the fights there. But I'm, you know, I'm looking forward to it. And I think a lot of people are from what I'm seeing on Twitter. You know, and um, it's going to be a good night. Well, boxing. 
uh, Terence Crawford versus Hank Lundy. People think yeah, Terence. Hank, Hank Lundy's got inside of Terence Crawford's head. What do you think? I think Terence Crawford's probably the best fighter in the world right now. He's a great fighter. You know, he's, he's probably my favourite fighter right now to watch. You know, he does everything correctly and he's a beautiful fighter to watch. So, um, I don't see him having many troubles there. But February 27th is a great night of boxing all around, worldwide, here in the UK and over in America. And there's a cracking show, like I said, at Doncaster Down tomorrow evening. So, um, I, for one, am looking forward to tomorrow night's boxing. Dave Allen, have you got anything else you'd like to say to your fans before you uh, end the interview? I, I'd just like to say there's, there's there's not many tickets left, which I'm really happy to say that. <coughs> you know, obviously, it's a, a lot of people like to go and watch Cal. And uh, there's little Camel Gary sites on the bill, but there is a few tickets left. So, you know, if anyone wants to come, they can get in touch with me, however best for them. And Ed, if, would you tell us we're somewhere listening to this interview? Yeah. Would you have a message you would send to Richard Towers? Just say hello, ask him how he's doing, tell him to train hard and I'll, and I'll see him at the press conference and um, I'll be there ready to shake his hand because, you know, there's no hard feelings and I'm just looking forward to a to a good night of boxing and hopefully we can put on a great fight for the crowd. But I hope he knows I'm 100% ready and I'm coming to, to, uh, to do a job on him. <coughs> so you, your message to Richard Towers is... You hope he's ready because you're ready to do a job on him. I hope he's ready. I want him to be 100% ready, you know, and um, I want to put on a great, want to put a great show on for the crowd and, and obviously I'm 100% confident I'm going to be uh, successful on the night. But, you know, I'm going to be fighting with my head, you know, and um, I'll be switched on. I'll be ready. I'm thin. I know you don't like me talking about my weight, but I'm 16, 7, 11 today, Richard. So, um <coughs> I'm fit and I'm ready, and I'll and I'll see you on the 24th. David Allen, the White Rider. Thank you so much for talking to Bayloric TV. Thank you, Ingram. Thank you.